Well, let's talk about the book of Revelation. Thank you for joining me on this video. If you've been coming to Stillwater's Church, you know that we have been going through the book of, of Revelation and we're talking about, the theme is, the title of the series is The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King. And this is who Jesus is. He is the Lamb of God. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he, of course, is the warrior king that conquers. He conquers evil. He conquers injustice. Uh, he judges the world and he rules as king for all of eternity. So um, we've been looking through this through the lens of Jesus Christ, seeing it in light of a person, not events. And you may never have looked at the book of Revelation that way, but that's what we're doing. And so um, today I'm going to talk about explaining who the harlot is in the book of Revelation chapter 17. Now, I've been doing these supplemental videos for those of you that have questions about different things in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to read 18 verses, so just kind of be patient with me. But I'm going to read this from Revelation chapter 17. It says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, now you've got the bowls, uh, the trumpets, the seals, uh, these represent judgments, the different judgments that uh, Jesus brings against evil, false religion, evil governments, etc. So one of the angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, come and I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute that is seated on many waters. Now you need to understand that in the Bible, uh, often this idea of a prostitute, uh, it described both false religion and evil government. Now, when we say evil government, we're not saying that all government is evil. Government was designed by God. There are three institutions really that were designed by God. The first was the family, and then God established the government, and it explains in Romans why he did that. And, and then, of course, the church. And so uh, these are three very, very important things. So uh, God, government was designed by God, but not, not all government is righteous. In fact, most governments are filled with unrighteous people, we could say. And there are many governments in the world and throughout world history that have been unrighteous. And so... Um, we're, we see here that when it talks about this prostitute, um, that it could be talking about false religion. It could be talking about evil government. So it says, let me start again. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came to me and said, come and I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. Once again, this is metaphorical language. Um, we know that a government doesn't have the ability to drink or to commit adultery. So he's talking about spiritual adultery here, that they had turned their back on God. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. Now remember, and we've talked about this, uh, that beasts in the Bible were often, they often represented evil, okay? And horns represented power, dominion, authority. You could say rule or government as well. And so, um, the, and, and the heads, kings, and, and, and different governments. So, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. In other words, she was very wealthy and influential and also very sinful. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. Now, Babylon in the Old Testament in particular, represented evil. It represented false religion. It represented evil government. It represented anti-God, anti-Christ, going against the will of God. Okay. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs, 
of Jesus. So you get the picture here that this is likely talking about a government that has uh, risen up against God. It is anti-God, anti-Christ, and it has martyred believers. We've seen governments throughout history do that. Uh, not only in the first century and the second century, but even in our day across the world, there are people today that are being persecuted and even martyred for their faith. Throughout the Middle East, uh, there are many countries that kill Christians today. And so uh, this is obviously um, uh, something that still goes on today. And when I saw her, I marveled, I marveled greatly, but the angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with the seven heads and the ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit to go to destruction. And, and I, I'm going to say this, um, that I believe that there are evil governments, anti-God, anti-Christ people in governments now and throughout history that have risen up against the people of God, okay? We can see that. We can point out that, and, and even in our culture today. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will marvel to see the beast because it is, it was, and it is not, and it is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated, there are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen, one who is, and the other who has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. And so if you're seeing this through the lens that many interpreters do, that he's talking about real governments here, and this is prophecy. It was, it is, and it is to come. Could be talking about the Roman Empire. Okay, it had been in the past. It was currently when this was written, and there are still leaders to come, okay? As for the beast that was and is, and it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. Ultimately, God destroys all your evil government, and Jesus will set up to rule and reign on the earth. And the ten horns that you saw are the ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour, in other words, temporarily, together with the beast. And these are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the lamb, and the lamb will conquer them. Jesus wins. He is not going to be defeated by evil governments. If you're frustrated about government action, governments in the world, uh, anti-God, anti-Christian things that happen in government, then just be a little patient. One day Jesus will defeat them. He will rule righteously. Um, and it says uh, th that he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and those with him are called, chosen, and faithful. We're going to be with him, and we're going to see this justice happen. And the angel said to me, the, water, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. So in other words, it represents things throughout the whole earth. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Well, the majority of Bible interpreters and scholars believe that Babylon represents the city of Rome. Now, that's not every person that believes that. And once again, it goes back to how you view the book of Revelation. I've talked about this in the past. Uh, preterist, historical, um, futurist, uh, dispensational, etc. Okay, so however you view that is going to color your interpretation. But throughout church history, the majority of people have seen this as 
the Roman Empire, the city of Rome, um, and the Roman Empire as a whole, with all of its people, all of its subjects, all of its provinces, okay? The seven hills in verse 9 are the seven selected dynasties of Roman emperors from Augustus to Domitian, okay? So, once again, this is the majority interpretation. Not everybody believes this, but this is the majority, and this has been, uh, throughout church history, the most believed position. The ten kings are heads of lesser and restless states eager to escape their enslavement to the colonizing power uh, of Rome, okay? So John's prediction of the fall of Babylon is his announcement of the impending dissolution of the Roman Empire in all of its aspects. So once again, uh, the book of Revelation written by John the Apostle, he had a vision of Jesus Christ. Jesus literally appeared to him and told him to write things to the churches and he gave them a vision, saw this. Um, some believe even he was taken up to heaven. Uh, but he says in the very beginning, the very opening sentence of the book of Revelation, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is about Jesus and how he wins and how he rules and how he judges and how that we will be with him in heaven, talking about believers, will be with him forever. Well, thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. And take a minute and share this with someone. Let them know about what you've watched so far uh, on these supplemental videos. Watch the sermons from Sunday morning, and I think you'll have, uh, you'll find that you get blessed by it, okay? Hope to see you this week at Stillwater's Church. God bless you. Have a great day.